Thanks so much, Rick. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be back here with you at MoatCon for this second year in a row. Um, I am Tiffany Castillo, and this is the Administrator's Guide, How to Leverage Moat to Increase Productivity, Positivity, and Performance in Your School. And so if you have seen me here before, when I last spoke at MoatCon, I was serving as an instructional technology specialist. And somewhere in the middle of the school year last year, I got a little promotion and I became an assistant principal at a high school here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I found out very quickly that the admin life is not for the faint of heart. So. This is me before I started as an assistant principal. Super smiling, happy, and excited for what was to come. I had no idea what my days were going to be like, but I knew that I wanted to show up each and every day for kids and give them all that I had. Well, I did that on the first day, and this is me after the first day. Yep, that's me on my floor. If you follow me on Twitter, don't call my principal and tell her that I showed you me passed out after working hard at work. So I found out really quickly that the administrator life is busy. There are lots and lots of moving parts. And it's basically keeping a million balls in the air at the same time. But after a few trial and errors, I figured out some ways some tips and some tricks that help me keep everything balanced. And so I'm here to share with you the administrator's guide. So first things first, I figured out for me, one way that I could keep everything rolling was to know what I had going on. Because an administrator is responsible for so many different moving pieces, it was really important for me to find an organized way to keep everything together. And thus, the digital planner was born. I'm gonna show you a quick peek at my digital planner. I built this in Google Docs, use a page list layout, and it's basically my safe space where I keep all of my tasks, activities, meetings, notes, things I need to go back and take care of all in one place. It's my own personal hub. And so here you can see I have little drop downs for where the task is in completion status. And then I have notes today if I have a meeting and need to capture a quick thing, a, a few quick notes, or if someone says something to me and I need to remember it. And I'll give you a view of what my actual planner looks like for this week. So this is my actual planner from this week. As you can see, I had a lot of things to do in one week. And sometimes it's hard to get it all done. But what I love to do is set a goal for myself for how much I'm going to complete that week. This week, my goal was 75%. I think I did a pretty good job. You can see here that I took some notes down at the bottom, that I have some tasks that I need to carry over that I might not have finished, some phone calls that I'll need to return. And usually on Sundays, I take a moment to reflect on my week and to talk about any major accomplishments that I had during the week. This week was our very first home football game. And we had a huge pep rally and it was a great success. That's my major accomplishment for the week. I can't wait to write it down in my planner. But you might be wondering, well, Tiffany, where did Moat fit into all of this? I mean, so like I said, my life as an administrator is super busy and I've got a lot of things going on at once. One of the ways that I like to use Moat because it's built into my Chrome browser and if you've seen me in the hallway, you see me pushing my little cart with my computer always open, always ready to go. My digital planner here is a tab that I keep open 
all the time, which means I always have Chrome open, which means I'm always ready to access Moat. So one of the things I can do is click my Moat Chrome extension and make a voice recording of quick things that people tell me that I need to do right in the moment. So I never have to lose track of any of the millions of things that people say to me. Okay, millions might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but hundreds, definitely. Things that people say to me throughout the day that I need to keep up with. And because I'm using my Moat Chrome extension, that means that everything that I've recorded is saved into my own Moat profile so that I can go back to it. Of course, you know, that means that I can also hyperlink it into the planner if I need to access it directly from the planner. And I'll show you what that looks like in real time in just a few minutes. So as you can see here, some of my tasks are complete and some of them are in progress and some of them are awaiting input from others and some of them might have been canceled. You can create your own drop downs in Google Docs. So one of the things that I was just speaking about is making sure that I am keeping up with all of the different things that go on throughout the day. And so for me, I had to deliver some safety badges so that all of our teachers are able to let administrator know if there's some sort of risk to safety in our building. Of course, we know safety and security is at the forefront of everyone's minds working in school de schools these days. And I happened to miss a couple of teachers because they were either absent that day or I just happened to miss their planning period. Here's a place where I can leave myself a moat reminder of which teachers I'll need to go back and visit. So let's try that now. I will open my Moat app, my Moat Chrome extension, pardon me, and I'll record my Moat. I won't record right now, but I just want you to see how it works in real time. And so if I were using a Moat that I had already recorded, I could share the link and highlight my text. I'll use some keyboard shortcuts, Command K and Command V and Enter. And there we go. I've tagged my task with my voice mode to follow back up with those teachers that I might have missed. And that way I'll know exactly who I need to go back to. So that's one way that I learned to think balanced as an administrator by making myself a planner so I can see everything I've got to do and everything I need to keep up with. But here's another part of my job. One of the biggest parts of my job is supporting teachers so that they can support students. And that brings us to step of the administrator's guide. Visiting teachers in their classrooms conducting classroom observations, and leaving valuable feedback to observations and lesson plans is one way that I help teachers and support them with improving their instruction. I used to leave feedback like this. Yes, it's an adorable template that allows me to type everything that I needed to say to a teacher right there in the moment in Canva, and I can just copy and paste it into an email or something like that. But one thing I learned really quickly is not everybody loves to receive written feedback. One thing about feedback is sometimes tone can seem a little bit off, which is why most is super helpful for leaving, for helping me leave feedback for teachers that will be received exactly the way I meant it. So we see this cute, cute, cute template for leaving fast feedback, but let's make it a little bit better. So with this reimagined template, I've created something short 
and sweet that I can record exactly what I want to say to a teacher in the voice that I want them to hear it in, which lets them know that, yes, I did enjoy your classroom. And yes, I do have some notices and some wondering, but it's not punitive. Giving teachers feedback that they can receive helps to change the culture in your building between admin and teachers so that they know that we're here for support and not for punitive measures. If you would like to use that template, at the end of this, I'm gonna give you a link for this slide deck. And every time you see this cutie pie little moat logo in one of these squares, it is hyperlinked to download the thing that I talked about. So in step one, of course, I'm gonna give you access to the digital planner to download and make it your own. And for step two, you'll get a Canva link to download the fast feedback template with this color coordinated megaphone. So you can hyperlink your moat and record feedback for teachers. And then step three. While I love being an administrator, and I love supporting teachers. One of the things that I don't really like to deal with is student discipline. Things happen, kids make poor choices, but it's a part of my job to deal with behavior referrals, right? And like I said, I'm ripping and running all day long. And usually, what I'm about to step into collaborative planning is exactly when students decide to make poor choices. But I can't miss collaborative planning because I have to deal with a behavior referral. Well, Moat's here to help me do that. So one of the things, like I said, I'm always pushing that cart. My computer's always open and Chrome is always ready to go. So I can use Chrome engine to record the details of a behavior referral so that I can keep moving. That allows me to move that student to another location where they can be separated from wherever the incident took place. But I have an teachers in collaborative planning. But one other thing, when I record in Moat, it also provides me a transcription. If I record the details of the behavior referral, in Moat, I can use that transcription later on to copy and paste the text directly into our um, student information system. We use Infinite Campus in my district um, to create that behavior referral and have all of the actual details of the event and not me trying to recall what happened six hours later at the end of the day after the student is long gone and the teacher is on her way home and I'm stuck trying to figure out, hmm, what really happened? Thanks to Mo, I can record in that moment, get that transcription, and paste it right into the behavior referral and have an accurate depiction of the events. And that way, the parent has a better understanding of what happened with their student, and the teacher feels confident that we were able to support them in their classroom with management. And now, like I said, Sometimes those things don't happen right in the moment. And so here you can see that I use my planner to mark places where I have unwritten referrals. And right down here in the bottom, I have written the initials of the student and I've hyperlinked that moat that I recorded about the behavior incident. Referral, I have that transcription available, ready to copy and paste. What nice. I did was built a table, right? And so when you build, let's start fresh. Um, what I usually do, so of course, you know, I had to make you guys a copy of my digital planner that I could show with no actual student information on it um, because privacy matters. When I build my own planner, this is always my heading. The in is my heading. And so to build this, um, I put the upcoming week at the top and it will build my um, table of contents here on the side so that I can go back week by week. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to copy last week's date. And we are going to paste them here. And change them next week, which is the 21st through the 25th. And now, usually I'll just copy and paste, but because we want to see how it works, we are going to, uh-oh, I think we're going to, yeah, we are. There we go. We're going to press enter a couple of times. And so I'm going to insert a tab. And because I know that I want the five days of the week plus a column for the status, I'm going to do 10. We're going to go 10 columns. And let's give ourselves five rows. And so we have Monday. And we'll go over to the next. And we'll type in our status. And here, what we're going to do in the status column, we're going to press insert, drop down. And so once we insert our drop down, Google gives us a few options, status and project status, which can be useful. If you want to start out with how they set for you, and then you can just go back and edit the action. And so once I have inserted one of the templated options, I'm going to go edit options and change blocked to cancel. Because block is not really necessary in my setting. And there we go. We've got some options for us to choose from for our new drop down, as well as the option to add additional drop downs. Now, for me, it's super important to have these at the top the weekly motivation, the goals for the week. So now that I know I've got enough dates in there, I can a status column a little bit more narrow because I don't quite need it that wide. And I'm going to highlight. Nope. <laughs> Technology is being so cruel to me right now. Let's, I promise you there is a way that you can copy the thing, the drop down from this cell and paste it to the others. So no, because it's no giving worries. me so much trouble, I'll move on to adding some rows above this one. And so for me, I just go ahead and insert a row. And then I make it a little bit bigger because I know I'm going to use more than just one or two lines. So for the sections for weekly motivation, I don't need three different columns. And so what I did there was select those three columns and merge the cells. So oh. it gives me one large box. Nice. And you can design that however you'd like. And so with all of these tips and tricks, and thanks to the help of Moat, this is me now. <laughs> this is me striking a pose in the hallway. You can see me with my cart, ready to roll. I'm even wearing high heels because I feel so confident that I can do my job and keep everything balanced throughout the day. And so now what I promised you was a way
way to download this slideshow so you can share it with your staff or just get access to the things that I shared. This link down here at the bottom, which is bit.ly slash guide, will take you directly to this um, slideshow to make a copy of it for yourself. And once again, if you click on the moat icon in the step one square and the step two square, you can download my digital planner and the Canva template link to leave feedback for teachers.